Hello, dear students. Welcome to the massive open online course on Swayam in Chemistry. I am Ms. Alisha Madan, and in the second last module of Basic Concepts of Chemistry, I will cover the topics atomic and molecular masses, mole concept and molar masses, and percentage composition. After covering these contents, you will meet the following objectives. Define atomic mass unit. Differentiate between atomic mass, average atomic mass, molecular masses, and formula mass. Describe the terms mole and molar mass. Calculate the mass percent of different elements constituting a compound. Determining empirical formula and molecular formula for a compound from the given experimental data. Let's now learn about atomic and molecular masses. After having some idea about the terms atoms and molecules, it is appropriate here to understand what we mean by atomic and molecular masses. Let's study first about atomic mass. The atomic mass or the mass of an atom is actually very small because atoms are extremely small. Today we have sophisticated techniques, example mass spectrometry for determining the atomic masses fairly accurately. But in the 19th century, scientists could determine mass of one atom relative to another by experimental means. Hydrogen, being lightest atom, was arbitrarily assigned a mass of one without any units, and other elements were assigned masses relative to it. However, as agreed upon in 1961, the present system of atomic masses considers carbon-12 as the standard. Here, carbon-12 is one of the isotopes of carbon and can be represented as C12. In this system, C12 is assigned a mass of exactly 12 atomic mass unit, which is called as AMU. And masses of all other atoms are given relative to this particular standard. One atomic mass unit, that is AMU, is defined as a mass exactly equal to 1 twelfth, the mass of one carbon 12 atom. One atomic mass unit, that is AMU, is defined as a mass exactly equal to 1 twelfth, the mass of one carbon 12 atom. And one AMU is equal to 1.66056 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams. Mass of an atom of hydrogen is therefore 1.6736 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams. Thus, in terms of AMU, the mass of hydrogen atom is 1.6736 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams divided by 1.66056 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams, which becomes equal to 1.0078 AMU. Similarly, the mass of oxygen, O16 atom, would be 15.995 AMU. Today, AMU has been replaced by small u, which is known as unified mass. When we use atomic masses of elements in calculations, we actually use average atomic masses of elements, which are explained below. The average atomic mass. Many naturally occurring elements exist as more than one isotope. When we take into account the existence of these isotopes and their relative abundance in nature, percent occurrence, the average atomic mass of that element can be computed. For example, carbon has three isotopes, that is carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14, with relative abundances of 98.892, 1.108, and 2 into 10 raised to the power minus 10, respectively. And masses being 12, 13.00335, 14.00317, respectively, as shown in the table. From the data, it is clear that the average atomic mass of carbon will come out to be 0 0.98892 multiplied by 12u plus 0 0.01108 multiplied by 
13.00335u plus 2 into 10 raised to the power minus 12 multiplied by 14.00317u which becomes equal to 12.011u. Similarly, average atomic masses for other elements can also be calculated. In the periodic table of elements, the atomic masses mentioned for different elements actually represent their average atomic masses. We have a problem here. Chlorine has two isotopes with atomic masses 34.97U and 36.97U respectively. The relative abundance of the two isotopes are 0.755 and 0.245 respectively. Now we have to calculate the average mass of chlorine and the solution is just as we did above. Average atomic mass will be 34.97 into 0.755 plus 36.97 into 0.245 which becomes equal to 35.46. Now we'll study about the molecular masses. Molecular mass. Molecular mass is the sum of atomic masses of the elements present in a molecule. It is obtained by multiplying the atomic mass of each element by the number of its atoms and then adding them together. For example, a molecule of methane, that is CH4, contains one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. The molecular mass can be therefore calculated as molecular mass of CH4, that is methane, becomes equal to 1 into atomic mass of carbon atom plus 4 into atomic mass of hydrogen atom which becomes equal to 12.011 U plus 4 into 1.008 U that's equal to 16.043 U. Similarly, a water molecule contains two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Hence, the molecular mass of water will be 2 into 1.008 U plus 16.00 U of oxygen. So the mass becomes 18.02. We have a problem here again. So as to calculate the molecular mass of glucose molecule, that is C6H12O6. Done in the same way, molecular mass of glucose will be 6 into 12.011 U plus 12 into 1.008 U plus 6 into 16.00 U and the answer is 180.162 the molecular mass of glucose. We'll now learn about formula mass. Some substances, especially ionic compounds such as sodium chloride that is NaCl, potassium nitrate that is KNO3 etc do not contain discrete molecules as their constituent units. In such compounds, positive, that is sodium or the potassium ions, etc., and negative, that is chloride and nitrate, etc., entities are arranged in a three-dimensional structure. Arrangement of sodium and chloride ions in the NaCl molecule is as shown. And the packing of Na plus and Cl minus ions in the sodium chloride structure is also shown in the figure. It may be noted very carefully that in sodium chloride, one Na plus ion is surrounded by six chloride ions and vice versa. The formula such as NaCl is used to calculate the formula mass instead of molecular mass, as in the solid state sodium chloride does not exist as a single entity. Thus, formula mass of sodium chloride is equal to atomic mass of sodium plus atomic mass of chlorine, which is 23U plus 35.5U equals to 58.5U. Let us now study about mole concept and molar masses. Atoms and molecules are extremely small in size. However, Avogadro's number, that is Na, that is number of molecules present in one gram molecule of a substance is 6.022 into 10 to the power 23, which depicts that numbers in even a small amount of any substance is really very large. To handle such large numbers, a unit of similar magnitude is required. For example, Generally, we denote 
one dozen for 12 items, score for 20 items, gross for 144 items, one ton for 50 kilograms, etc. to count different substances. The idea of mole is used to count entities at the microscopic level, that is atoms, molecules, particles, electrons, ions, etc. In SI system, mole, that is symbol MOL, was introduced as seventh base quantity for the amount of a substance. Hence, one mole of a substance is defined as the amount of substance that contains as many particles or entities as there are in atoms in exactly 12 gram or 0 0.012 kg of a carbon-12 isotope. It may be emphasized that the mole of a substance always contains the same number of entities irrespective of nature of substance. In order to determine this number precisely, the mass of carbon-12 atom was determined by a mass spectrometer and was found to be 1.992648 into 10 to the power minus 23 grams. Knowing that one mole of carbon weighs 12 grams, the number of atoms in it is equal to 12 gram per mole of carbon-12 divided by 1.992648 into 10 to the power minus 23 gram of carbon-12 which becomes equal to 6.022137 into 10 raised to the power 23 atoms per mole. This number of entities in one mole is so important that it is given a separate name and symbol. It is known as the Avogadro's constant, denoted by Na, which we have discussed earlier, in honor of Emidio Avogadro. It constitutes one mole of a particular substance. So we can hereby understand more clearly when we state that one mole of hydrogen atoms is 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 atoms. Or one mole of water molecules is also equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 water molecules. Or one mole of sodium chloride is equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 formula units of sodium chloride. So in terms of mass, a mole is defined as the amount of the substance which has mass of equal to gram atomic mass for atomic substance and gram molecular mass for molecules. Having defined the mole, it is easier to know mass of one mole of the substance or the constituent units. The mass of one mole of a substance in grams is called its molar mass. The molar mass in grams is numerically equal to atomic or molecular or formula mass unit in U. For example, molar mass of water is 18.02 gram per mole. Molar mass of sodium chloride is 58.5 gram per mole. Hence, from the above discussion, it is found that a mole of a substance can be related to its mass or number of particles present in it or volume of a gas. We have a figure again which shows the relationship of a mole of a substance with the number of particles present in it, mass of the substance and the volume of a gas. So hereby, we can summarize from the tables above that one mole of a gas occupies a volume of 22.4 liters at STP, that is standard temperature and pressure. After looking the tables carefully, we should note that the following equation is a summary to the tables that we have mentioned above. One mole of a substance is 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 molecules or atoms, which is equal to molecular mass or atomic mass which is equal to 22.4 liters of any gas at STP. The above equation can be used to solve the numericals based on mole concept by simply using unitary method. So after knowing what a mole is, isn't it interesting to know that if you weigh 58.5 gram of NaCl, which is common salt, 
you just happen to weigh a mole of common salt. That's because the molar mass of common salt, that is NaCl, is 23 plus 35.5 is equal to 58.5 U, which is 1 mole of NaCl. Example, to find the number of moles in 20 grams of NaOH, we can simply do it by unitary method as 40 grams of NaOH, which is the molar mass of NaOH, contains 1 mole of NaOH. So 20 grams of NaOH will have 0 0.5 moles, which is half of 1 mole. Also, another example of mole concept, where we will find the volume occupied by 22 grams of carbon dioxide. Then again, as per mole concept, as we know, that 1 mole of carbon dioxide is equal to 44 gram of carbon dioxide, which is the molar mass of carbon dioxide, occupies 22.4 liters of volume at STP. So, 22 gram of carbon dioxide will occupy 11.2 liters. So, you can use simple unitary method in solving such questions if the mole concept is known to you. Let's now look at the topic percentage composition. Until now, we are dealing with the number of entities present in a given sample. But many a time, the information regarding the percentage of a particular element present in a compound is required. For example, if an unknown or new compound given, the first question that would ask is, what is the formula or what are the constituents and in what ratio are they present in the given compound? Even for known compounds also, such information verifies whether the given sample contains the same percentage of elements as is present in a pure sample. Hence, in this way, purity of a substance can be checked by analyzing this data. Example, water that is H2O molecule. It contains hydrogen and oxygen. The percentage composition of both these elements can be calculated as follows. Mass percent of an element is equal to mass of that element in the compound divided by molar mass of compound into 100. Since molar mass of water is 18.02 grams, therefore, mass percent of hydrogen will be the mass of hydrogen, that is 2 into 1.008, divided by the molar mass of water, that is 18.02 into 100. And the answer is 11.18%. Similarly, to find the mass percent of oxygen, 16 grams of oxygen divided by 18 grams of the water molecule in 200 is equal to 88.79%. We have another example here where what is the percentage of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen in ethanol whose molecular formula is C2H5OH? And to calculate it, we need to first find the molar mass of ethanol, which is 2 into 12.01 plus 6 into 1.008 plus 16 grams. And the answer is 46.068 grams. Calculating the mass percent of all the three elements in it, we go as follows. Mass percent of carbon is 24.02 grams divided by 46.068 grams in 200 and the answer is 52.14%. Similarly, the mass percent of hydrogen will be 6.048 grams divided by 46.068 grams in 200 and the answer is 13.13%. And lastly, to calculate the mass percent of oxygen, it's going to be 16 grams divided by 46.068 grams, the mass of ethanol that you had calculated in 200 is equal to 34.73%. How is empirical formula different from molecular formula? Let's learn about the percent composition data which depicts the formulas for the substance. An empirical formula of a compound is the chemical formula which represents the simplest whole number ratio of various atoms present in a compound. 
if the mass percent of various elements present in a compound is known, its empirical formula can be determined. On the other hand, the molecular formula of a compound represents the exact number of different types of atoms present in a molecule of a compound. Molecular formula can further be obtained if the molar mass is known. Some of the examples to illustrate the difference between empirical and molecular formula are listed below. Example, the empirical formula for benzene is CH for the molecular formula C6H6. And similarly, for hydrogen peroxide, the empirical formula is HO for the molecular formula H2O2. Following examples will illustrate the calculations involved in the determination of empirical and molecular formula of a compound. We have an example here. A compound contains 4.07% of hydrogen, 24.27% carbon and 71.65% chlorine. Its molar mass is given to you as 98.96 grams. Now, what are its empirical and molecular formulas is our question. We have to do it in certain steps. Step 1. Conversion of mass percent to grams. Since we are having mass percent, it is convenient to use 100 gram of the compound as the starting material. Thus, in the 100 gram sample of the above compound, 4.07 gram hydrogen is present, 24.27 gram carbon is present and 71.65 gram of chlorine is present. Step 2. We have to convert into number moles of each element. That is, divide the masses obtained above by respective atomic masses of various elements. That is, moles of hydrogen will now become 4.07 grams divided by 1.008 grams, which is equal to 4.04. Similarly, moles of carbon will be calculated as 24.72 grams divided by 12.01 gram, which is equal to 2.021. Similarly, moles of chlorine will be 71.65 grams divided by 35.453 grams equal to 2.021. Now we have step 3. We have to divide the mole value obtained above by the smallest number. Since 2.021 is the smallest value, division by it gives a ratio of 2 is to 1 is to 1 for H is to C is to Cl. In case the ratios are not whole numbers, then they may be converted into whole numbers by multiplying by a suitable coefficient. Step 4. Write empirical formula by mentioning the numbers after writing the symbols of respective elements. CH2Cl is thus the empirical formula of the above compound. Step 5. Writing molecular formula. We have to first determine empirical formula mass, then add the atomic masses of various atoms present in the empirical formula. For example, for CH2Cl, empirical formula mass is 12.01, which is the mass of carbon, plus 2 into 1.008, the mass of hydrogen, plus 35.453, the mass of chlorine, and it equals to 49.48 grams. The second step in this part will include dividing molar mass by empirical formula mass. Molar mass divided by empirical mass gives us 98.96 grams molar mass, whose value was given there in the question, divided by 49.98 grams, the empirical mass that we just found out, and the answer is 2, which is equal to N. And the next step in that is multiply empirical formula by N obtained above to get your molecular formula. So the empirical formula, which is equal to CH2Cl, and the N factor is 2, hence the molecular formula becomes C2H4Cl2. So we can hereby summarize in this module that the atomic mass of an element is expressed relative to the mass of C12 isotope of carbon, which has an exact mass of 12U. Usually, the value of atomic masses used 
for an element is the average atomic mass obtained by taking into account the natural abundance of different isotopes of that element. The molecular mass of a compound is obtained by taking sum of the atomic masses of different atoms present in a molecule. For ionic compounds, formula mass is obtained instead of molecular masses. Also, we studied about the concept of mole of a substance and the number of atoms, molecules or any other particles present in a given system and it is expressed in terms of Avogadro's constant that is 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 also called as Na. So it is known as one mole of respective particles or entities. We have also learned about the percentage composition of different elements in a molecule or compound with understanding the concept of finding empirical formula and deriving molecular formula from it. Thank you.